You know, people think about entrepreneurship and there's lots of different, they think it's sort of one thing, but actually there's many different paths of entrepreneurship. Um, so you can divide it into as many categories. I like number three, so I tend to think about it in threes. Um, so on one side you have kind of, you have the funding approach to entrepreneurship, which is, which is of course practiced in Silicon Valley the best. And that's all about how do we uh, essentially make a number of bets and get and create an exit in a short amount of time. Um, and, that, and they're all trying to basically innovate new business models. On the other end of the spectrum you have what I call cookie cutter or craft business. And that's sort of most small business in America it's, or in the world. Um, it's you're not trying to make a new business model, but you are, uh, you know, you're, you're creating, you're, you're still running your own show and so on and so forth. And bootstrapping is kind of lies between those, those, those two paradigms. So in bootstrapping, it's sort of, you're trying to create a new business, but you're not doing it on the back of funding. You're doing it on the back of constraint and you're not constraining time. You're letting things unfold and then you emerge into a new business um, and you discover your business model. So it might take you five or 10 years um, to discover your business model from the process of bootstrapping. There's a number of ways to describe bootstrapping. I, I, I have a joke which is like, if I were in a blind alley and someone had a gun to my head, he said, bootstrapping, and he said, you know, four words. I would say, right action, right time. You know, and then he'd shoot me, right? Um, and if he said, you know, three words, I'd say, constraint creates innovation. And if he, you know, if he said two words, I'd say, use everything, you know? So right action, right time to me is, is kind of the four word uh, tagline for bootstrapping. And, and what it really says is, be in the moment, be in the present moment. Take the right action and, and follow what is there, both from your personal ambitions and goals, what you want, the situation. You know, if, if you start hiring people ahead of having a business and having customers, you, you're gonna you know, hit some trouble. A great entrepreneur finds their own style, okay? Whether it's, they call it bootstrapping or funding or whatever, th those are just categories, right? They discover their own unique style of entrepreneurship. But the ultimate thing is to find your own style. You know, uh, Bruce Lee would say this about, about Kung Fu. He said, people would say, what's your style? Is it, you know, you know quite Taekwondo, is it this? And he says, no, no, my style is no style. So what you find with entrepreneurship in Austin is that it emerges out of people's natural passions and talents, right? You're not just building any business just so you can build a big business. You're building a business because you think organic food's awesome and you think that's a huge thing and you love eating organic and you're a vegan, John Mackey, and you, want, you start a grocery store with your girlfriend. On, you know, and that's how that becomes, 30 years later, becomes a global Fortune 500 company. So in Austin, it's about this unique connection that the entrepreneur has to their passions and talents. And a lot of the time, you don't want to stop doing that, right? In the funding model, you're going to want to exit. You want to sell your company so you can make a million and then do the next thing. But if this is your passion, right, if this is your talent, if this is your life's work, if you're like Steve Jobs, if you're Bill Gates, if you're uh, Michael Dell, if you are John Mackey, you know, if, if this is what you want to do, well, you don't want to exit. You want to keep working it. You want to keep growing it and expanding it. So there's a natural alliance with bootstrapping and an Austin's ethos as a be yourself city. So if you look at our businesses and startups in Austin, tech and otherwise, you'll, you'll find this this trend that no one else could have built that business, the Alamo Draft House. No one but Tim, Tim League and Carrie Lee could have built the Alamo Draft House, you know, um, because of who they are. When you realize their stories, you're like, oh my gosh, it totally, totally makes sense. Um, if you're trying to go and play on a big stage, then probably New York is, is a great city for that. Um, you know, the Bay Area and uh, LA, you know, things like that. Hong Kong is another one of those, you know, hey, this is a, you're, you're gonna try to make a, a, big, a big success out of things. Um, but if you're in a period of exploration, if you're in a period of discovery, and you're trying to put it all together, and you're not just trying to follow uh, an existing mold of success, but discover and define your own mold of success, then I think Austin is, I, I don't know that there's another city that um, does that as well as we do.